Thanks very much, Minister, for being here. I want to focus in on testing capacity. We know that we are currently seeing 25,000 tests a day. We have the space, lab space and resources, human resources, I should say, to do more. And there are some challenges with supplies. Can you speak to some of the work that your department has undertaken to ensure that we have the reagent and swabs that we need? Uh, thank you very much uh, for that question. And that is an issue that's really important because testing, testing, testing is another uh, set of priorities that we've identified with the provinces. One example that I can highlight of how we've dealt with that issue in a meaningful way is that we received a significant shipment of essential chemicals required for the production of reagent, as you had identified, uh, which arrived in Canada. And uh, it essentially allows this company called Lumen Ultra. Uh, which now is in a position to produce enough reagent for months of production. So as we continue to ramp up testing, we have that key ingredient, which allows that chemical reaction to detect that virus. And that's one initiative that came about when that company, Lumen Ultra, approached us through that portal and said, we can build up reagent capacity, but we need some essential chemicals in order to do that. And we were able to make sure that they received that in a timely manner in order for us to continue to ramp up our testing. Do we have, and do we have then, are you, are you confident that we have the reagent capacity now to hit that 60,000 tests a day? Uh, this uh, example that I highlighted significantly ramps it up to about 500 tests, 500,000 tests weekly uh, for the foreseeable months. And we're also building up other measures as well to make sure we have sufficient amount of reagent. Uh, so I can say that in the short term, we have what we need. Presumably, uh, health is setting the targets uh, for us to hit with respect to testing capacity. Do you, do you have a sense of the capacity that we require and, and what then you are tasked with helping to build? So there's different elements to this. Of course, uh, health uh, wants to work with the provinces and see what capacity they have and build up capacity. That's really been the goal uh, when we're talking about flattening the curve is one aspect but also building up capacity and test capacity. And we are working with the provinces to identify, you know, what kind of testing solutions are they're looking for. And really they have the ability to ramp up testing and we want to be there to support them. And uh, we are in constant contact with them through the health department so that, and the minister of health to do those issues. Uh, th thanks, Minister. With respect to viral testing, so we obviously have the lab tests and we hopefully with that New Brunswick company and hopefully we have an answer uh, to swab supplies and we're able to ramp up to it at a minimum the 60,000 a day that we have the lab and human resource capacity for. On the rapid testing, how much has the government invested so far with Spartan Bioscience? So that's a great initiative. Uh, Spartan Bioscience is an example of a Canadian company that we engaged earlier on through the Industrial Research Assistance Program to help with their prototype and proof of concept for this diagnostic equipment that would allow for testing to be done upfront and provide rapid response, as you indicated. Uh, and we've made a significant procurement uh, purchase order with them uh, to make sure that we can conduct over a million tests. And this is going to be critical for many of our rural and remote communities, uh, also to many of the clinics that are dealing with patients. And as we, we look to open up the economy on the front lines like the airports, uh, this is going to be an essential tool. Right. So I, I can't uh, agree with you enough that it is an essential tool for reopening. And so if we are looking at a million uh, capacity of a million tests doesn't go very far, I would say, as we look to reopen the economy. And so do we have a sense of what... Uh, our investment translates into in terms of tests and how much more investment is then required to scale up to the necessary level? So just to uh, give you some additional context, uh, we put out a challenge to Canadian companies. And as I said, we are really mobilizing industry, we're mobilizing our science community and our highly skilled innovators. And through the National Research Council, as well as the Innovative Solutions Canada, uh, we made a request to different uh, companies and, and Canadians to say, what kind of solutions could you have for home test kits, for rapid testing? We received over 100 submissions and we're, re we're evaluating those on their merits and are going to identify the ones we can scale up in a significant way to complement what we did for the Spartan Bioscience Initiative. Uh, thank you. I, I would also encourage you, 
and your office to reach out to exist, existing manufacturers elsewhere around the world that have tests that work. So we know uh, Abbott Labs, for example, has a device uh, that can provide results in 15 minutes and they don't they haven't even sought Canadian approval. So I would encourage your office and others at the government to reach out to Abbott and to reach out to other companies and let's let's make sure that we have these devices that are in operation elsewhere in operation in Canada as well. My, my last question is in relation to digital contact tracing. And I'm curious to know have what efforts are underway and are those efforts going to build off of uh, Google and Apple's work, which seems to me the most sensible way with an open API, it seems the most sensible way and most efficient way to get to some digital proximity tracing. So when it comes to contact tracing, it is one tool that is being discussed uh, fairly often in the media and by the public and rightfully so, because it's the tool that's been used in South Korea and Taiwan and Singapore with a certain degree of success. Uh, we're looking at those international experiences. We are working with a range of companies to understand what solutions they want to provide. The key element here is to make sure that we... Un unfortunately, Minister, that's that's all the time we have for that round. Okay, I'll come back to that. Sorry about that. Thank you. Um, Erskine Smith, you have five minutes. Thanks very much. Uh, I want to start by asking about the DP3T standard. Uh, Mr. Kennedy, are, are you familiar with the standard? Having a feeling that maybe you're going to tell me I should be, but at the moment, I, my powers of recall are limited. So That's okay. Uh, it's, if, if you're not familiar, I have no issue with that, but I, I would like you to become familiar with it. So we, we saw this conversation go on in the EU about what the standard ought to be for digital proximity tracing, and this is the standard that they are landing on. And I would encourage you to direct your staff to give you a briefing on that standard. Uh, I also want to ask whether the work that is underway, the extent it is underway to develop a digital proximity application, uh, are you going to, are you looking to rely upon the Apple Google framework? Are you in touch with Apple and Google on this front? Uh, certainly, in the course of our work, uh, as you might appreciate, we, we were well aware of what they've done, and certainly they've reached out to us, and there have been conversations. What I want to say, and I'm certainly not looking for any sympathy, but, but I just want to underline, we have had many, many firms reach out to us offering solutions. So when we say that we've had conversations, uh, I just want to indicate that it's, you know, um, you know, it's not like there's kind of, you know, one thing that kind of we've looked at. I mean, we've actually had a lot of different uh, organizations approach us with, with kind of possible options. And we wanted to kind of look at those and try to make sense of which ones might be the most promising and which ones might be more problematic. That makes sense uh, to and me. And so Apple and Google, yeah, sorry. But, no, that makes sense to me. Just I was just going to say, Apple, Apple and Google are certainly, certainly uh, Apple and Google are certainly some of the firms that we've spoken Right. So uh, that, that makes sense to me that you're going to look at the applications that companies submit. I would just say when you are looking at those applications, the, the real role of an application, in my view, would be to say it's got to operate on the front end with the API from Apple and Google, which are going to be on the operating systems. And that's going to, I think, be the, the best way of triggering adoption rates. And the application will then have to speak to provincial databases uh, on the back end. And so that would be, I think we ought to be working with Apple and Google. I mean, every, so long as we're looking at the DP3T standard, I, I think, and which certainly that work can feed into, I, I think it's a good idea. So I would encourage you to, to pursue that. Um, my only other question on digital contact tracing, and, and by the way, on the privacy side, uh, these companies may well be agents pursuant to FIPA, at least in Ontario. And so they would be captured by our privacy regime as it relates to health information. but. Uh, with respect to adoption rates, so we see Singapore has an adoption rate of under 20%. Uh, that's not going to be a, a really important contribution, I would say, in some ways, to contact tracing. Uh, can you speak to some of the limitations of digital contact tracing? Well, I think uh, the honorable member has hinted at some of the, the some of the concerns, I guess, that are out there. I mean, for any 
for anything to work, there has to be a certain critical mass of users. I'm, I'm not, I'm not uh, personally an expert in these matters, but obviously something is not adopted, then its utility is less. And so it's not just a matter of the technical functionality of the solution. It's, it's a matter of whether citizens trust it and feel they can use it, and then it's going to be respectful of their privacy and their needs. Uh, maybe I should just say, because I know that this type of issue, you know, tends to get media coverage and so on, but I just, I want to reemphasize what the minister said, that foremost for the government and the prime minister's talked about this is, are, are, are the, are, is the knowledge that Canadians, you know, want to ensure their privacy is protected. We want to be looking at these kinds of possible solutions because they could be really useful in the fight against COVID-19, but not at the expense of some of these fundamental rights. And I would also just note that, and as all members know, I mean, we live in a federation. Health data is 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 provincial, and so obviously we've been talking with our partners at the provincial and territorial le- level too. It is not it's not necessarily simply a case of, you know, the deputy minister dreaming something up and and then and then um, you know and then we roll it out. I mean, this this you know we we live in a big country and I completely we obviously that. want to make sure that these kinds of considerations are. Our federations are factored into the discussion. That's completely appreciated. And, and I, I think you're right to highlight the importance of privacy. I also think as, as someone who was very vocal on privacy issues in the last parliament and, and continue to be, I think the DP3T standard is, is a privacy gold standard. At the same time, I, I think it's fair to have a credible conversation before we commit to anything about if, if uh, an opt-in system is going to have very low adoption rates, and we already have serious civil liberty concerns. I'm, I'm, we're, we have a lockdown here in Ontario. If, if it meant getting out of a lockdown a month early because I've got an app on my phone and it's done so in a, an opt-out system, I, I think it's a conversation we should have, and it shouldn't be precluded just uh, right, right from the get-go because of privacy concerns. Thanks so much. Thank you, Mr. Erskine-Smith.